Hello, welcome to the final episode of Value Investing. Over the last four episodes, you've heard from market veterans, veterans in the listed equity space, the traditional guys, the traditional investors in traditional securities. And you've understood from them the concepts and how they made it big. The guest of this program, this episode today, is somebody who's broken the mold, so to speak. Uh, for the traditional investor, uh, he's uh, pretty much in uncharted territory. With me is Nikhil Vora. You've not seen him on air uh, for a couple of years now. Nikhil, thanks very much for your time. Pleasure. Uh, you were known as one of the top research analysts in the country. You headed IDFC Securities in your last avatar, and then you disappeared. Uh, you're, you've been in Bombay, but not on uh, TV and media. So tell, us, tell our viewers a little bit, what have you been doing and what are you doing now, more importantly? Firstly, thanks for having me on 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 air. Uh, it's been quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, so obviously, uh, this departure has been for fair reasons. Uh, so over the last uh, couple of years, uh, what we've done is uh, we've really set up India's first consumer-centric domestic venture fund. So I I run uh, Six Sense Ventures, which is which is the fund that we've started out. Uh, and the idea was frankly about uh, pulling across what we did in the last 20 years and aggregating that all into a into a into an organization and create one out of it uh, which is about maybe three or four core issues that one thought was relevant one is what we think is our understanding of the consumer landscape and and uh, for good or bad reasons we've always uh, always pitched ourselves as consumer specialists in some form uh, so this is the consumer centric fund and we've, we've we've done that for the better part of our life second was about uh, getting all our relationships on board so while one moves from a professional environment to an entrepreneurial journey, uh, we didn't want to leave our, our relationships which we've built over the last 20 years and, and uh, we've created an ecosystem within Six Sense Ventures, uh, which we think is really formidable mm -hmm. and also aids a lot of young stage businesses that we are going to invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third is about uh, our investing capabilities. Uh, um, again, I've been an investor, uh, personally been an investor for the last 20 years in, in the markets. Uh, fair bit of my personal capital over the last seven, eight years was into the early stage businesses, into private businesses. And uh, one got a sense that that's the space to be in mm -hmm. uh, over a long term period because fundamentally we were we were looking at investing in the consumer of tomorrow, today. And that's what one thought was very relevant to do. The last point is important that you and your personal capacity uh, were invested in some of the early stage businesses over the last seven to eight years. So. Uh, taking outside money to manage and putting them into these businesses was kind of a natural progression from there. Uh, it was, uh, because I think the sense one got was that uh, for businesses that, uh, that, that are going to be relevant over the next five, ten years, uh, those businesses are being built in India today. Mm. And if they are being built in India today, uh, they obviously are not listed. Mm. So the, the, the challenge was that uh, are the leaders of today going to be the leaders of tomorrow? Uh, and uh, almost always one got the answer that it's not likely to be. So, and that is true even if one looks at uh, history globally, mm. that 90% uh, of Fortune 500 companies have died uh, over, over decades uh, because it's unlikely that leaders of the past uh, carry on the mantle and become leaders of the future. Mm. Um, and our sense was that unlike in the past, uh, you know, new age entrepreneurs, uh, first generation entrepreneurs had no baggage of the past. Mm. They had no mortal fear of taking on a Unilever, for instance. Mm. And uh, they had a fairly good risk appetite along with a with a very clear sense of business direction. And uh, they were participating in what the consumer of tomorrow would require, be it in terms of products, services, distribution, so in a way, analytics, and so on. The focus was focuses new businesses, which in a way did not exist uh, earlier. M maybe there was demand for those businesses, but those services and products did not exist. And now they exist, and they're meeting that captive de demand. So I think, I think the, the essence of what we're trying to do uh, is invest in a smart ass team, mm. Uh, in a, who makes a kick-ass kick product in a big-ass market, frankly. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, we think we did a fairly competent job of it in a listed space okay. over the last 20 years, and we think we will do a fairly competent job of it in the next 10 years uh, into the same space. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, it could be in new emerging markets, new businesses. It could be in traditional businesses, but which are done very differently. Okay. So uh, a lot of our investing that we've done in Six Sense Ventures uh, pretty much emerged from that philosophy where uh, what is 
clearly a prerequisite is that the space has to be extremely large. Yeah. What is also a prerequisite is that we should really love the sponsors whom we are investing with. Mm. And what is also a prerequisite is that their product capability and their execution capability is of, a, is of something which we can really vouch for. Um, so I think it, as long as they fall into that, 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 uh, that framework, we are, we are good to go. Uh, let me ask you, uh, why can't established businesses, great franchises, you think, uh, do it? Why do you think it's not, it's not, you believe it's not possible for them to uh, do it? I think you know, there, are, there are a couple of uh, core reasons. Uh, uh, one is that if, if the consumer of tomorrow is changing, hmm. Uh, fundamentally, he's calling for a complete change in the way businesses are being delivered to him today. Okay. Uh, which means that there is disruption that the consumer of tomorrow is seeking. Uh, and it's very unlikely that a traditional business which has been doing, doing reasonably well will change course uh, to disrupt its own business to be relevant tomorrow. Okay. It's almost unlikely everywhere in the world. There are very, very few players who really emerge from that trend. What about investing in that idea in a separate unit and, and, and building it up? We haven't seen that. I mean, frankly, as yes. uh, we haven't seen that. I think uh, I think I see a sense of urgency in, and actually, traditional businesses now looking at that same framework. Mm. So, if I look at let's say a Unilever, which is very close to my heart uh, always, uh, uh, Unilever or an ITC and so on, traditional successful businesses, mm. uh, you know, they are starting to look at those frameworks. But my gut is that uh, for them to really go whole hog uh, is a bit challenging. Uh, it's, it's as challenging as uh, a Titan trying to sell a Cartier tomorrow. Okay. Uh, there might be great demand for a Cartier and Omega and Rado, but I think uh, Titan would do a disservice to their own brands By if they start to, to sell third-party brands. So I think it's as, as good as that. Uh, so I think it's a challenge for existing players to really shift gear, shift domain, because the DNA of the organization is main, meant for, for, doing, for being, being comfortable with what has been successful till date. Sure. Uh, and sure. I think... Uh, it's our responsibility as venture fund, it's our responsibility as early stage investors to, to really be participating and helping grow uh, the, the environment uh, which will be relevant for the next 15, 20 years. Some of the investments uh, that you have, uh, and, and some are private, some are public, and you can obviously uh, come in there, Crossroads India Assistance, uh, there's a company called Grab in which you have put in money. Uh, Paytm is now uh, you know up there as kind of the flag torchbearer of new businesses, new age businesses, as doing very well, uh, Vinny Cosmet. Let's just pick up a few and let's maybe start with uh, Crossroads India Assistance, uh, which, where you put in money. What was the idea? What got you attracted? So uh, I think uh, you know there are, there are two pools to really look at. One is uh, what I did in my personal capacity sure. over the last seven, eight years. Sure. So I think the first transition also of setting up fictions was about, about the feeling that a uh, lot of value and a lot of relevant businesses are being built as we speak, mm. and thereby one was investing today, and those were almost always in private domain. Okay. So a fair bit of my personal capital was being moved into early stage businesses over the last seven, eight years. And some of the names I ended up investing uh, amongst the seed investors or amongst the very early stage investors included Paytm, mm. uh, Parag Milk, which is the Go Cheese brand, uh, Vinnie Cosmetic, which is the Fog Dio uh, brand, uh, Kangaroo Kids, uh, PVG, uh, Purple.com, Bevkoof, Infinite Analytics, and so on. Uh, I think interesting part in all those investments which I did in my personal capacity was that uh, in retrospect, I thought uh, there was a similar line across all, all these investments that one did. Uh, these were almost always first generation entrepreneurs. They were operating in large spaces, uh, and they had no mortal fear of taking on leaders in their space. Okay. And they created a difference in the way the products were being sold or the services were being consumed and so on. Uh, we wanted to really continue that same line of thought as we started Six Cents and really invest from there. Mm. So from Six Cents, we've done five investments. Uh, uh, the notable ones as of now include Crossroads and Ethos sure. and Grab. Sure. Uh, so Ethos is India's largest uh, luxury watch retailer. Mm. And uh, it perfectly sits in with our theme of investing in the consumer of tomorrow, today. Mm. Um, our sense is that uh, over the, you know, as brands become very powerful, mm they become master brands and then they become a generic. Uh, I think Titan is going through that curve mm. uh, where it becomes generic and thereby it loses relevance over a period of time mm. unless the brands obviously morph and change course. Uh, the only way to move away from Titan is to move up, mm. which is uh, start to buy into the Swiss watches, which is the Cartier and Omegas and Radio. This kind of sits in with something that you've said for years as well, premiumization, right? Precise. Across Precise. product categories. Yeah. 
So. I think it, it pretty much sits in with, with that theme. Uh, and our sense is that, you know, if India today is 15% of India is actually mid-premium. Mm. Uh, look at China. China is 70% of Chinese market is actually mid-premium. Mm. Uh, so there's a, such a huge evolution which will happen in that category. And the only leader in that category today is someone like Ethos, which, which, is, a, which is a trusted brand, trusted uh, distribution platform which is available. Uh, so we just just, to, uh, just uh, FIA for our viewers, Ethos is a uh, company owned by the promoters of uh, Kamla Dials, which is a listed company, right? Yeah. So Ethos is a subsidiary, subsidiary of, of KDDL, KDDL, which is a listed company, yeah. Okay. But you've invested in Ethos. Yeah, uh, which is the our investments are in Ethos, which in is Ethos. the subsidiary of e KDDL. Okay, so uh, go on, go on. So uh, we like uh, Ethos on that basis. Uh, so we think there's a long rope in this business. Uh, we've invested in a company called uh, Crossroads, mm. uh, which I think is a very interesting and fascinating business. Uh, it again sits in with with our theme of investing in the consumer of tomorrow. Mm. Uh, Indians by nature are very assistance driven in almost all forms, right? Right from our homes to our offices, uh, to our cars, and so on. Uh, we require assistance in all form. Mm. Crossroad is India's largest roadside assistance company, which means that uh, anywhere in India, your car is stuck. In 30 minutes, they'll be there to help you out. Okay. Uh, which I think is a fantastic claim to be at and fantastic positioning to be at. Now, in the context where, uh, let's say you have a flat tire, uh, I'm sure we've never done up our flat tires ourselves. Uh, our drivers have very rarely seen it. Uh, and I'm sure our wives have never seen seen tires. Sure. So I think sure. uh, there is a there is a need for such a service model to evolve, and this is a model which prevails globally. So you look at the AA of of uh, UK or the AAA of US. Uh, these are all 100% penetrated markets. India is only 1% penetrated in RSA, mm -hmm. and Crossroad is 75% of that 1%. So de facto, they are among the only players in that space. Uh, we like this space. We think there's a huge opportunity in this. Uh, both from a B2B perspective as also B2C. Uh, they are the largest B2C player in India. They have over two and a half lakh subscribers. And it's a model which I think is at the cusp of change from being a, being a physical infra player, which is what they've been, uh, to also being a completely technological-led uh, led company. So they'll morph into being a, a AAA of US along with a Hong Kong or urgently, uh, which I think is a huge value proposition to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are some... I mean, uh, just to understand this, uh, this is you need to be a subscriber and pay something annually to be able to avail of this service when the need, when, when uh, the need okay. arises. So you fundamentally become a subscriber at say thousand bucks per year, and okay. uh, that's what makes you. A, uh, and they have seventy-five percent of the market, you know, which is which is still very very small. It's very small. Yeah, very it's small. a one percent penetrated market. Uh -huh. It's a market where volume growth uh, can be hundred times, given that where you are, you are at one percent. Uh, the value growth. Uh, is at a differential of 20x uh, compared to global market. So there is a huge room for ARPU growth in some form in this. Mm -hmm. uh, we see this as a very valuable business. Uh, globally, a couple of RSA companies got listed and, and, and bought over. They got valued at uh, $3.5 billion and $1.5 billion. So clearly there's a very, very huge value proposition which is, which is in this business. There is a fair bit of consumer stickiness which happens. So we think this is a And they've been around for a decade, decade and a half, right? Uh, they've been around for a decade. They've been self-funded till now. We're the first investors in that company and that business. And we think there's a long way to go in this. Why, aren't, why isn't this listed? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, our viewers would want to know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think obviously a lot of these businesses have, have very strong legs to walk and run. Uh -huh. uh, it requires some support in the initial stages. And this is where we really come in. We're the first investors in it. The business was self-funded. Uh, and I think there is there's this huge roadmap which is available for them. Uh, eventually, these are businesses which will be strategic in nature. Either they grow on their own strength and they become very, very relevant, or these are very strategic assets for insurance companies or other players to really look at them, or car car companies. Or car well. companies, for that matter. What about a company called Grab, uh, which you invested in? It's a hyper-logistic service provider. So Grab What do is, they do? So Grab is a play for hyper-growth and hyper-local. Uh, let me just position it at, at that. Uh, Grab is... Uh, is one of the larger uh, hyperlocal companies which does uh, uh, deliveries for for uh, food uh, food and groceries business, and they will now move into a lot of other verticals, including uh, logistics and so on. Uh, I think it's a fantastic bunch of team, uh, bunch of guys whom we've invested in. We like the space. We think this is a very relevant space over a period of time. Uh, the last mile connect is something which is 
a very specialized uh, domain mm. and uh, most players would want to really not be part of it and really get it outsourced. Mm. So there's a very huge B2B angle today in it, which uh, maybe over a period of the next three to five years will morph into B2C also. Okay. So we like the space. Uh, we like, we've co-invested along with, uh, with Zomato in this, uh, uh, which is again interesting from the perspective that we've looked at. Uh, by Zomato investing in it, uh, we've in some form ensured that the customer acquisition cost pretty much becomes zero. Mm -hmm. Zomato is the front end and uh, that really helps us to piggy ride on the growth of Zomato pan India and maybe in a lot of parts of the world uh, and, and really grow on that basis. So our, our customer acquisition cost becomes negligible, uh, which I think is a, is a big positive for, uh, for a player like this. Yeah.